Hello, this is Dr. John Baugh, and I'm going to be teaching you in this uh, first video how to get Apache NetBeans set up with the open source version of the JDK and JavaFX, as well as Scene Builder. So the first thing we need to do is we need to download the open JDK. Oracle um, does release different versions of JDK, but currently they're trying to, uh, well, have commercialized uh, version 1.8 of the JDK, or what we call Java 8. So some software, like Apache Spark and things like that you might use for data science, um, require Java 8, so there's really not any way around it. And Oracle claims that if you don't use it for commercial purposes, you're not going to be in trouble. However, if you decide to make any kind of money, um, you have to purchase a commercial license. From Oracle. Now, at this point, the commercial license isn't particularly expensive. However, in some ways, I think that this kind of violates the spirit of what Java was originally developed for. Um, so we're going to use all open source versions of everything, and it actually will function better in the long run. Uh, NetBeans, as of this recording, just released 11.2, Apache NetBeans 11.2 which does have the ability to create, or so it seems, a JavaFX application. However, it's using an older version of JavaFX, and it's also using the 1.8 version of the JDK. It does not work with any of the open JDKs. So I'm going to recommend that we use all um, the open source versions. So first things first is we're going to download the open JDK. So you can look for open JDK. And as soon as you do that, you should be able to find it off of Oracle's site. There's actually a little, it says download here. And then there's jdkjava.net slash 13. And you'll notice that we have Windows 64. This is um, commercial builds are available from Oracle for a non-open source license. Um, those are the ones you have to, uh, generally you'll pay for commercial support for but here, this is the open source version here. So we'll get the Windows version. Uh, now you could pick your version of choice depending on your platform as well, but I'm going to download the Windows 64 version of the Open JDK 13. So that's going to take a few seconds. Um, while we wait on that, the next thing we can start searching for is the uh, Open Java FX. And if you look there, it's at openjfx.io. And you can go down here, and there's actually a, um, a download that will appear here, download option right here. You go there, and it takes you to the download page. Now, you need to be very careful when we do this. So the version of the JDK that we download is 13. So there's a minor point release of uh, or patch release of 1, so that's okay. But the major version is 13. That means that the JavaFX version has to match. So when I click this download, it takes me to the JavaFX. Do not download, at least currently, the version that is appearing under the LTS or long-term support is 11.0.2. This is the one everyone gets trigger happy and they just click download and you know call it a day. This is not going to work properly. Well, it looks like I got trigger happy and clicked it. Um, well, this is not the one we want, though. So we've downloaded the JDK. We're going to download latest release, not early access builds. We want the version to match. So it's 13.0.1, and there are two different Windows versions, two different Macs, two different Linux, and then there is documentation. We're going to download the version for Windows SDK. I'm going to hit download. So the download has started. It says we've got about 17 seconds left. Um, so that'll be the start of that. The next thing is under Gluon, since we're already on Gluon's website, we might as well go find Scene Builder. So there's Scene Builder. You can download and install Scene Builder. I already have it installed, so I'm not going to go to the trouble of showing how to do that. It's literally a no-brainer. You literally just download it and go through the installer. Um, the other ones are not quite as easy, so that's why we're not doing that. Um, but right here, if I go to the little arrow here and show in folders, since I'm in Chrome, it'll be slightly different in others, uh, such as Firefox. 
So right here, you see the OpenJFX and OpenJDK. Make sure they were both 13. The other thing I'm going to do, oh, and we also have the Apache um, installer from a previous thing that I downloaded, but we'll worry about that in a second. If I grab this, these two, I'm going to cut them. And I actually have created on my C drive, um, under, well, actually under Documents, um, I am going to create a folder called Java Stuff. I don't like putting spaces in things like this because uh, there are some pieces of software that don't work very well with path names and have spaces. You can put this really anywhere you want. I would not recommend putting it on your desktop, but doc, doc, um, document seems to be a good place to put it. So I go in here, um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste both of those zip files. Now I'm going to extract the JDK, right-click Extract All. This is the open JDK, so that one's going to take a little bit of time. Not too long, though. Give it a few seconds. And uh, when this is done, we're going to be able to also extract the uh, open JFX. So then we'll have both the open JDK as well as open JFX. So... It's very fast. It's hung up on something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. That took long enough. All right. So it's finishing up what it has to do. It apparently had a large um, portion to extract, and that took a couple extra seconds. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to extract the uh, open JFX. So we'll just wait for this to complete. And then we should be good to go. <laughs> All right, there we go. Good. Okay, so it has shown what's in there. Um, and we have the folder named the same as the JDK full uh, zip file. Now we're going to do the same thing with the JFX, open JFX. I'm actually going to uncheck that so we don't get a pop up. Um, okay, so this is extracting. This one's probably going to be a lot faster because it's not as big as the whole JDK. It's just additional libraries. So there's kind of an annoyance going on right now in the Java community. And one of the big things is that obviously Oracle's commercializing the 1.8 version of Java. And people have been kind of waiting on them to try to make money off of Java and anything they purchase. So that's been a little bit of a bummer lately, um, but other things have been a problem also. So NetBeans became or went under the control and uh, development of the Apache Foundation, so that's not a bad thing. It just changed things. Um, the other thing is JavaFX went under the company or organization Gluon that creates Scene Builder, so now they're responsible for maintaining Gluon. So now instead of having everything cohesive, You've got everyone working on all these different little um, locations all over the place, different companies, and it's hard to get everything integrated. Um, so I'm going to delete both zip files and leave the folders that I've created. Uh, under the JDK, there's actually just a folder called JDK1301. You can just leave it as is right now. It doesn't really matter, but I like cutting it from here and pasting it up one level and then deleting the old folder it lived in just because it's an extra layer we don't have to worry about. And then the JFX, same thing. Cut the folder inside of it, go up a level, paste it, and then delete the old folder. So now I've got JavaFX SDK 13.01 and JDK 13.01. This is the open source version because um, we know we downloaded it from there. And I've already got Scene Builder installed. So now the next thing um, for setup is we need Apache NetBeans. So under the netbeans.apache.org, I'm going to go to that website. Seems to be quite busy right now. There we go. And now we're going to go under um, downloads. 
Now we're going to be careful. As of this recording, we have the um, Apache NetBeans 11 feature update 2. So that's NB 11.2. We go to download. And right here you'll notice there are binaries, source, and installers. We're going to use the installer for Windows. And be careful there, don't just right click and try to save it because it actually takes you to a new page. And now here you can pick a mirror site that is close to you. Since I'm uh, in the southeast Michigan, there's the ftp.wayne.edu. You can just do a control F and find something close to you possibly or just kind of look through and see if you find something interesting. I'm going to download this from Wayne State University, which is in Detroit. Very close, less latency from, say, downloading it somewhere in California or Germany or something. So it's downloading Apache NetBeans. And we'll give that a few seconds. And once that's done, we'll set it up and make sure that it's pointing to the correct version of the JDK. Okay, there we go. Okay, so <clears throat> once you launch the installer, it behaves like any other installer. Um, it'll say welcome to the installer and it'll ask you about different other stuff you might need. Um, it'll tell you you can customize stuff, you can accept the terms of agreement, hit next, and then you can tell it where the JDK is that you want to use. Now, um, <clears throat> it's going to install JDK 1.8 or can install JDK 1.8, um, but you can tell it to use a different uh, JDK. So I'm going to tell it to use the one that I have under documents and then under, um, well, we've got to make sure it's under the right document. So we're going to do Windows users and then I've got my, this one right here, documents, Java stuff, and then under JDK 13. So I pointed to that one, hit next, tell it to check for updates, and hit install. So I'm telling it instead of using the 1.8, um, I'm telling it to use um, the version 13 that we just installed. So this one's probably going to take longer than um, some of the others, but it's still not too bad. It just takes maybe a couple minutes. So, well, that's faster than I expected. Thank goodness for solid state drives and a lot of memory. So it may take a little bit longer on your system, depending on how much memory you have and your processor and the age of your computer, etc. So um, once this installs, we'll be able to create any kind of default Java application, which would be nice. Um, we'll give it a little test to make sure we can create a basic Java application and then we'll come back and I'll do another video related to specifically um, getting JavaFX um, working. Okay, so it's checking for updates, making sure that we're up to snuff on the most recent um, version and any kind of plugins, it'll say success. Okay, now it's installed. So now I'm going to actually search for it and you'll notice it's now um, available. Make sure I pick the right one. That's the installer again. Um, I'm going to go to the app. Let's say settings created by a previous one. That's because I had 11.1 .1 installed before. I'm going to hit no because I'm giving it a fresh install. And here we go. There is NetBeans 11.2. I'm going to create a brand new Java project just to make sure this works. I'm going to use Java with Ant and click next on that. And it does the first time it'll um, possibly say it's activating features or it might give you a kind of a blank screen for a little bit. Um, but then, yeah, right here. So it says download and activate. Make sure it has the runtime. It will download what's called the JavaFX implementation for Windows and NB Java C Java editing support library. But this is um, may not work exactly the way you expect. And also it's going to be, um, it wants to use 1.8.
So we're going to have a little bit of a disagreement on that. Let's see if this works. <laughs> okay. And hit finish. It'll activate. And then you can create a basic application. I'm just going to call this Hello NetBeans. And I usually uncheck my main class here and hit finish. And then you can actually look in the library and see that it has JDK 13 installed rather than 8. If I create a nice new class, default, we're just going to call it Hello World, the name of the class. And that's an extremely small font, so you can change your font settings under Tools, Options, and then Fonts and Colors. And I'm going to change the size to, say, maybe 18 or something because of the resolution here. And Public Static Void Main. Oh, that's nice. Came back up. Okay. Yeah, yeah. A couple more times. Yeah. Let's have fun. Okay. There we go. Hello world. There we go. And we'll run this sucker and see if it works. And it did. So right down here, we've got our output as expected. So that's pretty much all we need as far as the initial setup. Um, watch the next video um, in order to install and configure the uh, JavaFX. So I'll see you there.